So recently, I published here on the channel a really cool source, whole beat source, 100%. And I know some of you will be freaking out. Haven't you read my comments? Yes, I did read your comments and I'm going to comment on those. Not specifically, but I'm going to summarize what your concerns were. Um, some, someone even said like, yeah, we will never find probably the Rosetta Stone of Tempo Research or the solution to this. And this is really, this really, I mean, it's striking. I answered him like, yes, we have the Rosetta Stone. Actually, we have thousands of Rosetta Stones, simply the metronomarks. The only thing you need to do is take a piano or whatever instrument you play, you take a metronome here, this one or a digital one, doesn't matter. It's almost digital accurate, digitally accurate, I can promise you. Doesn't matter, you take a metronome, you sit and you play. If it works, fine, be happy. You can go on with your, with your life and saying like, listen, I'm playing according to the intention of the composer or the editor. If it doesn't work, well, then you have to find the problem. And then you need to find a solution or you say like, whatever, I don't care about these metronome marks, my feeling, my musical taste, my own history as a musician dictates what I'm going to do. And that's fine too. Eh? And this text that I brought to you was, of course, as I mentioned, uh, was a found of uh, Khaled Dabusi. And he doubled down a little bit in the comment boxes uh, as answers. And really, I mean, I, I get it. Eh? You present the source and I'm going to present it again. Don't worry, I've translated that. You will see the translation. I will explain everything in detail again. Um, and I see that because we, like like him, like not being used maybe to being in the fire, like you present something, you say, this is a real contribution to what we are looking for to solve. We are seeking to solve the metronomic problem. Um, some of you will say, oh, we don't have a problem. It's all possible. It's all, yeah, it, that's fine. That's fine. But send me your recordings. And if you cannot play in the tempi you claim that are simply possible, you're out of the business. I'm sorry. Do I sound arrogant? If I sound arrogant to you, I mean, then you have to fix something inside your brain because I'm not arrogant. When you claim like, yeah, I cannot play all these tempi, but professional players, if you just practice a little bit like can, and now we wait for him to respond. I mean, how ridiculous is that? If you claim it's possible, you take your phone, it's all you need, you record yourself at the piano and you just play. Yeah, but many people have done that. Yeah, really? Um, yeah. I mean, guys, this is common sense. Eh? And if you say like, I cannot do it, but I want to participate, then you take your phone and you call to Valentina Lizitsa or to Polini or to I don't care who, which pianist. If they don't want to do it, you just crowdfund your your cause and you say like i need ten thousand euros to make lizitsa play the daily exercises the technical open übungen from Czerny from first note to the last note to prove that single beat was correct then you crowdfund that i mean we you cannot sit here in the comment box and say like every time these circles that spin around we present something ah we neglect that we go to the next one i mean it makes no sense so yes i'm ridiculizing that a little bit but I'm taking my time here again to explain what should be the obvious. Am I saying that this text is like the Rosetta Stone? I just said like the metronome marks are the Rosetta Stone. We don't need any theory. That's the cool thing of what we are researching here. And guys, I don't honestly understand why so few musicians are actually into this. What do you actually claim when you go on stage? And you're not Valentina Lezitsa, but even she, she, and all these players on that level, when they go on stage, what is their claim? Yeah, but they just want to play beautiful music. Fine. But that's not the only thing they claim. They go on stage and they say, like, I play like Beethoven. We will never know how Beethoven played, but I do my utmost best whatever I can is in my power to go on stage and to just play the and I mean and then if it's not how Beethoven played I at least tried no you didn't you didn't when Beethoven would return it's not speculating it's just a fact just read his letters everybody can do that right 
have been translated into English. Beethoven says, wait for my metronome acts. The world cannot live without them. Three months before his, his death. Not my words, eh? Beethoven's. He gave metronome marks. Czerny metronomized a lot. Marshall's metronomized a lot. We have a lot of quotes from the 19th century, not only from Beethoven, saying like metronome marks represent the accurate tempo indications of the composer. When I say to all these virtuosos on stage or to you right now watching and say like single beat is just a norm. Well, and I say to you like, listen, research showed that or at least from a logical sense, it makes sense. There is only one solution that you have to change your attitude towards tempo. Then everybody freaks out. It's my tempo. I have to feel like, well, how dare you? How dogmatic? Those composers were serious about it. Anyways. I'm digressing. Again, am I saying that this source is the Rosetta Stone? No. But it's a pretty damn important source. Eh? And if people feel hurt like this is really a whole beat source, that then I'm sorry. And actually, I'm not. I mean, if you're part of this or you want to be part of this and you cannot handle a text or a fact that maybe doesn't confirm what you already thought or all the way thought or right, your, your entire life that people told you, your teacher, your friends, your gods you're looking up to. I'm sorry. There's nothing wrong with doing what you're doing. But when you are presented with facts, please sit down, read and do your homework. And homework means... There is no fight here, guys. You, you can write an article against this or in favor of what you believe. We present some sources that, you know, give a foundation under the things that we think are inevitable. That's the beauty of this. What other solution do you have? Again, take your piano, metronome, score, recordings. Okay. That is an introduction. Here is that beautiful source. So the normale, I'm giving you the quote in English, but uh, I'm reading it in German. It's important. Guys, if you want to do serious research, learn languages. I mean, you don't need to speak fluently German or, or French or whatever, but you need to understand. I mean, this is not, this is not like a very complex text, but it's interesting. German especially, I would say. Anyways, die normale Bewegungsschnelligkeit dürfte sein, auf jede einfache Choralnote zwei Schläge von Melses Metronom, welches auf 60 gestellt ist, bei dreiteiligen Melodien, wie Lobe den Herren, there we go again, wie Lobe den Herren, oder O Heiliger Geist, O Heiliger Gott, etc., die halbe Note equals 50 mm. So, if you translate that, the normal speed of movement should be Two beats of Melzel's metronome on each simple choral note set to 60. In the case of melodies in triple meters such as Loben und Herren or O Heiliger Geist, O Heiliger Gott, etc., the half note equals 50 metronome, mm, Melzel's metronome. The old organists counted two pulse beats on each simple choral note. So, some of you said, like, listen, this is sentence number one. This is sentence number two. Sentence number two has nothing to do with sentence number one. You take a metronome, you have 60, tick, tack, and you have here 50, tick, tick. Yeah, but I mean, this is one paragraph, right? You can, you can search for the exception of the exception of the exception. But if you read this as a normal human being, the normal speed of movement should be two beats of Melzer's metronome when you put the machine on 60, right? For each simple choral note. That's simple. You put it on 60 and then tick, tack, tick, tack. It, it has nothing to do with whole beat or single beat. Again, when we don't have a metronome mark, you, you can say, okay, in single beat, this would be like a quarter note 60 metronome mark. In whole beat, it would be half note 60. I mean, we can agree on that, right? But then the, the sentence goes further. We are still, and I feel like stupid to explain that, eh? we are still in the explanation of simple choral notes. Two, two, three, two. Two ticks, one each. Two, two, and, and two, two time signature, you set it on 60. In three, two, you set it on 50. And then it's like, 
He could, I mean, he says a half note equals 50 mm. That's a metronome mark. There you are, you are bound to a metronome mark. Saying this metronome mark, this sentence has nothing to do with the first sentence is like the, making the absolute most, um, how do you say that? Um, um, not weird, but not, what's the word in English? Yeah, the, 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 explains, the explanation that makes the least sense, put that in front of everything. The first and foremost, most logical explanation of this text is that it is one paragraph, each half note, each half note, choral note, two beats, like the old organist counted two pulse, beat on, pulse beats on each simple choral note. That's true for all the choral notes. Either, regardless of or they, or if they are in 2-2 two, two or 3-2, regardless, the old organist counted two pulse beats on each simple choral note. The normal speed of movement should be two beats of Mills' metronome on each simple choral note. And then he goes set to 60, and then he says in 3-2 is 50 mm. And there it's game over. I mean, we can, we can have a debate on whether this text is correct or whether this text is a mistake. That's a whole other ball game, but it's there. If we say, okay, before we are going to um, uh, label this text as a misprint, we have to see first if there is not any solution that makes sense. And in this regard, if you say like, whole bit, no, no, never existed. No, I don't want to hear it. Da, 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 da. Like, no, no, doesn't exist. I mean, ridiculizing a little bit, but sometimes it feels like that. Then, okay, this is a misprint. I mean, then reject the whole text. But if you say we have two solutions, then this, this text leans much to whole bit, if not a hundred percent. And therefore it's really a cool source. Now, Scarlett um, shared another source in his complete honesty. That's a text from 19, from 19, I wish, from 1891. Die Kirchenorgel und etwas anderes. So it's, it's a book about organ building and uh, church organs and playing and so on and so on. And then on page, let me see if I can show you, 132 in that book. He shared the link also, eh, Scarlett. Zweis, and he says, like, am sichersten wird das entsprechende Tempo zwei Sekunden, zwei Pulsschläge auf die einfache Choralnote in zweiteiligen Takten. So that's the same, eh? that's very similar. So he says um, that the normal tempo for these choral notes in 2-2 two, two are two seconds. So two heartbeats, Pulsschläge. Bei dreiteiligen Takten etwas weniger. Okay, so um, in 3-2, a little bit less, and there was the confusion. Carla translate like a little bit less, um, still in the mindset of 50 is a little bit less than 60. So yes, that makes sense. But if you see it from the perspective of a duration of two seconds for a half note in 2-2, two, two, then we are actually on the other side. And it's a little bit faster in 3-2, which makes sense, right? But a few things here. First of all, uh, show me the correlation with the two texts. It's possible there is one. And if there is one, then one of the two is wrong. I mean, why should this 1891 text be more important than the 1878 text? He could have just made a mistake in the 1878 text regarding the metronome mark that he gives for 3-2. I mean, you might say, yeah, but that's, that's easy. No. If both are the same, if in these 13 years nothing happened, then why not? As said, when you, when you point your finger to a text and you say there's a misprint, you have to find all the solutions. It just can be that the metronome mark was, 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 was just that he meant like 66 or 72. I don't know that he messed up, that he didn't try, that he thought like 60, 50, 50 feels faster. I have no idea. It's possible. I mean, I'm not even speculating. I'm not interested because the definition of that other text is so clear. And by the way, it's not a definition. Some say like, yeah, it was an explanation of the metronome use. No, it was not. That's the great thing. It was like 50 mm, like he could have written like 50. 
You have a 50, then of course, what's 50? 60 is a second. 50 is nothing. 50 is only something when you have the metronome. But also, guys, if you, I was scrolling here in this text. If you go a little down here, there is a footnote actually. Right here. It was weniger. And there's a footnote. And it's very interesting. It was actually. <laughs> so. In German it reads, Die Synode für der Provinz Brandenburg setzt 1898 Ja? Nein, nein, 1889 die Bewegungsschnelligkeit des ausgeglichenen Korales in zwei Tagen Takten auf eine Sekunde Dauer, Dauer für die einfache Choralnote fest. So, what is it now? Here it's two seconds, there it's one second. I mean, in one text, or is this again a definition of the metrical second? I mean, this is not an encyclopedia. Eh? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Why is he giving a footnote? You could say like, yeah, there, is, there is, was a congress there and they decided upon a faster tempi for the coronal notes. Yeah, but double. That's weird. It's possible. Eh? It's absolutely possible that the tempi doubled there. We, makes sense, even. In a way as an explanation. But what is it? Two or one second there? So you see, in those 13 years, there was like a huge congress there to, that recalibrated um, Tempi for choral notes. So that's there in between. Go back to the, to the first text. If we combine the two texts, so let's see what happens, because now comes the importance. So in two two half note uh, two seconds durations two ticks and in three two okay when both centers are disconnected we have um, a tempo of either one point two seconds because that's the that's the result of putting the metronome in fifty and a half either every half note um, one tick or if whole beat is meant that's two point four seconds so that's a little slower again can be a confusion. But etwas weniger. This is not etwas weniger. This is not a little bit slower. Am I now saying that I know the answer for this text 100%? No, I'm just focusing on what he says in the main text. In this one paragraph, that's the uniform text that was written in one time, one evening, one hour even probably. 60, every half note two ticks. In 50, you have 50 mm. And every half note gets two ticks. He confirms it afterwards that in the old days the organist took two pulse beats for every half note. That's the only thing that matters. The other text is inserting some confusions like, yeah, but what is it? 3-2 is actually a little bit faster. Again, which makes sense. But that's not in that text. So the, the metronome mark might, might, may be wrong, but the explanation of it cannot, cannot be wrong. How can, how can it be wrong? I'm sorry, Mr. Metronome. What, 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 what can you possibly un interpret there differently? When that's indeed single beat to 50, yet then you have a double tempo almost. And so, guys, if you look at these texts again, 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 what is your perspective? We start from the problem. There's your, there's your piano. There's your metronome. Here's your pile of scores. Show me that single beat is a reality. Show it to me. You, yeah, but there are many recordings. I don't have to repeat myself. When that's not possible, you go and look at texts like this. Because we have two solutions. We have not more possibilities to read this damn thing. Eh? Single beat, whole beat. That's it. And then you say, okay, I'm now sitting on the chair of whole beat. What happens? Yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense. Uh, there is maybe this little friction with the text in, in 1891, but yeah, I mean, that is also a friction in single beat in both ways. Or you go sit on the single beat chair, and then this text doesn't make sense. That's just a mis mistake or just a very incoherent text where you sing choral notes, not in two seconds, in 3-2, but in 1.2 seconds, so almost double as fast. And so this is a little puzzle on the gigantic image, eh? I used that image before. It's, it's actually important. We are trying something, a picture or a painting or an image that is like 
fall apart in, in, in hundred pieces of, of puzzle pieces and we have this is just a piece of the puzzle and we put it on that board in this image but there are so many white spaces that we don't see and now the perspective you take is important because the perspective projects the image that you actually see in the image so the white spaces you can fill it up like it's not speculation it's not fantasy it's just like what happens if this piece belongs there on the whole beadboard, then this fits. What happens if this piece belongs to a single beadboard? Well, to start with, where is your single beat image? Those are the recordings you have to provide me. And I'm sorry, if you don't do that, you're out of the game. You can think about the solution, but you cannot claim that single beat is the obvious solution because there are no problems. You cannot do that when you cannot demonstrate it. And so there's the image. So this is just a piece of the puzzle, puzzle but one of the key um, areas, I would say. You know, a puzzle where you have like this, this, this piece of the sky that you don't find and there is one that fits, you know. This is one of those, but only one. The puzzle is not finished. But the thing is, and there, are, there are, with, that, with that idea, I, 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 I will end. And I repeat myself a zillion times, but it's so important. I, I hear so many times from you, or not from you especially. I mean, I'm not no, I don't know who I'm specific, specifically talking to right now, but from people that actually should know better. And the idea is not yet there. You have to think what is the other solution as well, huh? And that's why I said feel confident. There is no other solution, and. If I go really a step, fur step further, if you are really aware of the problem, of the metronomic problem, then you know that single beat is not an option. And if this text would be inconsistent with whole beat, then you would then I, then I can imagine you go so far than say like to say like this text is inconsistent. There's a lot. Those are a lot of words to explain. Actually, something very simple. Take a perspective, see what happens, but don't reject the other perspective from the start and i see that with so many of you guys especially the, the ones that come back time after time again reject everything that they explain and just take a little piece out of this board of whole beat board because they don't even know that that's that they've taken the piece from a whole beat board they say like yeah that doesn't make any sense uh, we reject that i mean that doesn't work like that you have to come to a coherent story a coherent image Otherwise, you will be there with your 10,000 euro crowd for crowdfunding for Valentina Lezitsa on stage and she will be asking like, what do you want me to do? Yeah, play daily exercise of journey with the metronome and she will run away. And there goes your 10,000 euro crowdfunding and your beautiful concert. By the way, I wouldn't enjoy that either way, single beat or whole beat, listening to hours and hours of journey exercises in this way. Not that journey didn't write nice etudes, he did. The exercises, hmm, not so sure. There would be a lot of money, actually, for a concert like that. But if you can prove that, go ahead, crowdfund that concert. But don't forget to invite me, Alberto, Lorenz, and our whole team. Because we're open for it. When that would happen, on the fortepiano, please. The Steinway would be fine. Doesn't matter. Then we would be there, and we would be clapping our hands, like say, okay. It won't happen. It won't happen. It would have happened a long time ago. For instance, in the hip world, where people actually claim that they were interested in reconstructing the thoughts of the composer. And I think this is in sincerely do. We have to redefine what that actually means. Okay, enough for this source and for this video. If you enjoyed that, you're still here. I guess you're subscribed. Even if you do not agree with whole beat, I know many of you are subscribed and I appreciate that. Be part of the club. We will convince you, don't worry. And if you uh, want to be part of the inner club, well, you know, we have a Patreon page. There we meet every month in a hangout. You can talk to me. That's actually pretty cool for me because then I have a human in front of me instead of a camera. Talks much easier. If you go on Patreon, you will see those replays of all the hangouts we had. They are actually awesome. And it's every time the same thing. 
My wife Anya has to text me like, listen, dinner is ready. Otherwise, we would be talking for an entire night. Okay, guys, check it out. If it's something for you, I appreciate that a lot. And we definitely see each other very soon again. Bye.